everyone, this is Jay. So today we're going to be talking about the Roman Civil War, once again, Mars and Sulla, and also some historiography here. So one of the big issues when we deal with these ancient sources is the lack of knowledge, the lack of sources. And this really kills us about Rome because there really wasn't a lack of sources. We just have a lack of sources that have survived because the Romans were very big on writing things down. But the reason why there's also a problem is not just the age and natural disaster, but people would actually just go out and destroy people's stuff because they didn't like their viewpoint. And this is what happens. Sulla actually does this after the death of Marius. Marius had written some, some things down, but Sulla is going to have his work and his allies' work destroyed. So we don't get a really good picture of Marius and his supporters from their perspective. We know the people were big fans of him because he wanted to give you know, more rights and whatnot to the Italians and not just the city, citizens of actual the city of Rome. But we don't have that in concrete detail. And in addition, in Sulla, we see writes a autobiography that obviously would have explained his motives, but even with that, we're going to see a cousin is not is going to edit it after he dies, and it is going to be edited so that the Senate would more appreciate what was being written, but even this record is actually destroyed as well. So we have to essentially get whispers from other, other works to find out what was being said in these these works that are, have been destroyed. A good example of this would be Suetonius, who really is a gossip columnist, uh, just writing sensationalized news, but we have to use him because that's what's there. Now, and what also is a problem for this is the Roman Civil Wars occurred, and Julius Caesar and Cicero are, are just hanging out there. I mean, they're, they're the teenagers when this stuff happens, and so they're both prolific writers, and so they could have given really detailed and nice accounts of what's going on and whatnot, but they don't do so because they're both trying to be politicians and try to win office for themselves. And we do get a, a, a little bit from Cicero, but he doesn't, he doesn't really go and attack either Sulla or Marius. He tries to say that middle course. Julius Caesar is dealing more with Marius, but he is, because he's going to own that just because Marius is his uncle, but he's going to really just focus more on his ideas. Now, historiography, in terms of Marius, historians have really seen him at a negative light. And this, again, was goes back to the prescriptions and some of the stuff that goes wrong at the end of Marius' career. But Sulla is going to be interesting in the fact that he's going to get a more favorable perception, although it is more it is actually kind of balanced and more what you would expect so for instance there is a historian by the name of uh, harriet flowers and she is going to make the case that sulla is responsible for the destruction of the republic because he is basically he gets upset because marius goes behind his back to take this command that Sulla has just been awarded to go fight this guy named Mithrates. Marius wants his last hurrah. And Sulla is on the way marching. And Marius goes to Rome, gets his overturned. He's going to take command. Sulla gets mad, marches his army on Rome itself, the first time in history. But he, and she, said, she sees him in a negative light that he is responsible for the destruction. However... There is going to be a guy named Ronald Syme, and he's going to make the case that Sulla is actually becoming a dictator for the right reason. He's going to, and the dictator can only be a dictator for six months rather than two years, but Sulla was going to be a dictator for a good reason. He was going to break the laws in order to rewrite down the laws so they could not be broken again which it's a very strange concept, but it has been, it is, like I said, this is one of the issues with the Roman historiography. It's how do you view these things? And a lot of it has to deal with our lack of knowledge. So it ends up becoming, what can we glean from the sources available and kind of figure out what we think just sounds good.